You saw in last week's episode of Market Journal that producers with prevented plantings in corn or soybeans have 15 days from the final planting date to report delays to the FSA. As Kathy Anderson from Nebraska's State Farm Service Agency said, the state agency has requested an extension of those deadlines. Additionally, the acreage reporting deadline for farmers is July 15th, and as you'll now hear, farmers will also soon need to sign contracts for ARC and PLC farm programs for the 2014-2015 crop years. We are anticipating that the secretary will make an announcement soon, um, hoping sometime possibly towards mid-June that we, we will begin contract enrollment. Um, since the implementation of the farm bill in February of 2014, We've mainly been focused on producer education, um, held a number of meetings across the state in conjunction with UNL Extension. Producers have really been focused on all the options they've had available to them under the Farm Bill, uh, reallocating bases, updating their payment yields, and then deciding which programs they wanted to elect into for the life of the Farm Bill. So there is an important final step, and it's an annual step, and that is coming in and doing contract enrollment uh, for each farm that's going to participate. How complicated is that? Yeah, it really just involves the producers on the farm coming in, telling us who had the risk in production in the crops each year, um, and signing that contract uh, to participate. When it comes to these new commodity programs, do you have an idea of what the potential payouts might be? Well, under previous programs, really since about 1996, um, we've made direct payments. And with the 2014 Farm Bill, the authority for the direct payments was repealed. In fact, the last time we issued direct payments was in the fall of 2013. Under the new programs, which are the Price Loss Coverage Program and the Ag Risk Pro Coverage Program, um, those programs are dependent upon um, looking at whether or not there is an actual loss in price, and in the case of the Ag Risk mm -hmm. Coverage Program, whether there is a loss in revenue. Um, since the payment is determined by whether or not there's a loss in price, we have to actually go through an entire marketing year for the crop before that determination can be made. So, for example, for corn and soybeans from 2014, that marketing year began in September of 2014 and will run clear through the fall of 2015. So we won't actually know whether payments are earned until those final crop prices uh, have been determined. Based on some current projections, it does appear that there could be some substantial payments under Arc County um, if producers chose to participate in the county level program. We don't have final numbers for Nebraska yet, but indications are that many of our producers uh, did opt to elect into that ARC County program. From the price loss coverage program standpoint, uh, currently based on price projections, there appears that there could be a small payment on corn, uh, but that fluctuates um, as the projections move forward. There was a June 1st deadline when it comes to uh, dealing with conservation, but for those that are actually, when we talk about conservation compliance, mm -hmm. what do you want farmers to know about actually following those guidelines and provisions? Right. Well, conservation compliance has been an important part of our Farm Bill provisions for many years, since the mid-1980s. Uh, for producers that have historically participated in our FSA programs, mm -hmm. um, they, they are not new to conservation compliance, but um, a key factor in our 2014 Farm Bill was that it linked conservation compliance now to eligibility for the crop insurance premium subsidy. Um, what that really means for a producer is approximately 60 percent of a producer's total premium subsidy is subsidized. Um, so it's very important for a producer to have a form 801026 on file by June 1st and that's for the following uh, reinsurance year for crop insurance. But the second part of that is they have to ensure that they're in compliance with those provisions. So they need to identify whether they've got highly rotable land on their farm or whether there's any wetlands uh, that exist on the farm. And NRCS uh, could assist them with that. And once they know whether they've got those highly rotable lands, they need to be sure that they're using an approved conservation system when they're farming out there so that they stay in compliance and they remain eligible not only for FSA program benefits, but now for the crop insurance premium subsidy as well.